The next uh, speaker, we're just getting his uh, talk loaded up, is Dr. Otto Walter. Uh, Dr. Walter is one of the pathologists here at UMass, and uh, I, I can't tell you how important it is to have a pathologist who is really interested in this particular disease. If you've ever looked through the literature and tried to figure out where does your tumor uh, fit in the scheme of things, you come across all these different names and acronyms and scales of, uh, of describing these tumors, and it's confusing not only to people who aren't familiar with the terms, but to us as well. Um, so it's great to have somebody that you can, we, what happens is over time as we start talking about the tumors, we start speaking the same language, and then when Otto's telling me what he's seeing under the microscope, I have a better sense of what I'm going to find in the operating room, and vice versa. I can tell him what I'm seeing in the operating room, and that helps him to learn. So at tumor boards, when we get together to talk about these things, I really rely heavily on what he has to say, and it really does change how we uh, manage people. So uh, thank you, Otto, for coming to speak to us today, and he's going to talk to you about the pathology of these tumors. You're welcome. Uh, are you hearing, do you hear me well? Hopefully, yes. So uh, I'm sorry to give you a few more minutes of this sedentary lifestyle sitting here, but uh, these are probably some important uh, topics uh, we, we have to discuss. I don't know, have, have you ever met a pathologist before? No, yeah. So, so who is the pathologist? That's the first uh, topic. Uh, the, uh, then I will talk about the anatomy and histology of the appendix, some basic tumor concepts, and uh, talk about how does it apply to the appendix. I show you a few examples, and I, uh, give, I have a big and convoluted table for the uh, prognosis and different uh, diagnostic terms which is used on this uh, term. Uh, so I'm a pathologist. I'm not a CSI hero uh, on the nighttime television. Uh, we work in the hospital, mostly uh, away from the patients. We are consulting with the doctors, uh, with the surgeons and the gastroenterologists. And, uh, and we, we make the diagnosis. We, we stage and grade your tumors. And uh, we have a relatively important, however, very uh, obscure uh, role in this uh, uh, process. Uh, there are some clinical pathologists who are di directors of laboratories, and most of us are anatomic pathologists, and we are diagnosing biopsies and specimens uh, uh, from uh, uh, surgical uh, procedures. And uh, most of us uh, do very few autopsies, uh, and we take care of the living patients. And uh, how the uh, specimen become a uh, slide where we can make a uh, diagnosis is also an important uh, Thing. First, uh, there's a biopsy or a surgical procedure which gives you an appendix or a little bite of uh, colonic tissue that gets into the uh, uh, container. It is fixed and transported. We put it in a paraffin box, uh, undergo specific processing. Then it, uh, uh, I'm sorry, we are going this way. So first we gross it, we, we take a look at it, uh, we describe it, how does it look like. So that's, that's a very important part of the uh, pathology report. I don't know whether you saw a pathology report before that always has a gross uh, description. Uh, so the grossing uh, takes place, uh, and then we take important portions of the specimen, and, and uh, those little uh, tissue pieces will be processed and put in paraffin blocks, cut, stained well, and then we will have this slide which we can put under the microscope and take a look at it. And those slides will be seen on these uh, PowerPoint slides uh, later. So these steps has to be done. This takes usually overnight most of the time. So next day, the pathologist have the slide. A little bit about the, uh, the anatomy of the uh, uh, appendix. The appendix is right here in the abdomen. Probably you uh, uh, know it. Uh, it is a little blind pouch of the, of the uh, colon. It is at the bottom of the cecum. And uh, it has this uh, important area of the mesoappendix and uh, attached to the uh, uh, rightmost portion of the uh, large bowel. And the ileum is coming in here. Uh, the, so if we cu cut it across, we will see this. This is more uh, similar to what we see under the microscope. So the appendix has multiple layers. Uh, the innermost layer is the troubling one, which is uh, uh, which plays the role in this disease is the epithelium. The epithelium has some uh, mucinous cells and different other cells I will show on the next picture. But there are other layers which are very important in, uh, in the staging of this disease. 
So the, underneath the uh, mucosa, this is the mucosa from here to here. There, there, are, uh, there, there is a submucosa, two layers of muscle, and this is the peritoneal lining. So we, we have to carefully examine every specimen and see how uh, far this disease is progressed, whether the disease is present on the, uh, uh, on the surface of the, of the appendix. Where there, where there, sometimes we only see some mucin on the surface, and that is also very important in these uh, specific uh, uh, diseases. And this is, this is the, uh, these are those uh, mucinous cells which produce that, that uh, large amount of mucin, which we can see in, in pseudomyxoma cases. Uh, these are the epithelial crypts. Uh, they, they have relatively nice uh, elongated uh, architecture. They are lining these, uh, uh, these uh, uh, test tube-like uh, structures. And this is how normally they look like. The nuclei are relatively basally oriented. There is some mucin on the top. I don't talk much about that. So I, I, next is the I want to talk a little bit about tumor concepts just to, to uh, uh, appreciate what's different in the appendix because it's somewhat different, uh, the behavior, clinical behavior, and the histologic uh, picture or the pathologic uh, 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 picture is, is not concordant completely with the other uh, tumor processes. So this is the epithelium which we normally usually see. As I said, the nuclei are basally oriented. There are some uh, mucin on the top. Uh, it, it is very similar throughout in the, in the gut, in the GI tract. Uh, when, when it's carcinoma, this is a malignant tumor. It is, it is a big step between uh, this and the carcinoma. The, one of the steps is the adenoma, which is a dysplastic change. You see the nuclei are different. They are relatively enlarged. They, uh, they become stratified. They are not lined up very nicely near, near the base of those cells. Uh, they, are, they are darker. Uh, and, and they, are, they are suspicious that they are, they are not uh, right. And uh, there is another term which is often used, the cyst adenoma, especially in the, in the appendix, when these adenomatous uh, uh, cells form a cystic dilation of the appendix. Uh, uh, that, that's, that's called cyst adenoma. These, these are still within the realms of benign as far as the uh, usual uh, clinical behavior of these lesions. And then there is this high-grade dysplasia inside to carcinoma when, when the cells are really completely lost their, their uh, polarity. You can see these very large, very, very different uh, sized nuclei within the cell, within the, yeah, within the uh, epithelial lining. And this, this is the inside to carcinoma. The cancer is not expanding uh, outside of the basement membrane. It is still uh, confined to the uh, space of the crypt, but, but it has the potential and, and it has the features, the uh, histologic uh, features of, of a possibly uh, uh, malignant process. And the next step would be the invasive cancer, where, where the tumor process uh, uh, reach and breach the, the, the uh, muscularis uh, mucosae and, and goes into the submucosa. And this is what we can see here. This is relatively mucinous tumor with these, these are epithelial islets, and, and this is the muscularis mucosa which surrounds the, the uh, uh, mucosa, and, and that, that's uh, a uh, uh, border between the mucosa and the rest of the abdominal wall. And then the next step is the peritoneal carcinomatosis, where the tumor is beyond the original organ. It can be an, anywhere in the GI tract, in this case the appendix and it, it is considered as a distant metastatic disease. So these are the steps of the, the tumor genesis. And in the appendix, this is, this is very, it, it, can, it can be everywhere, basically. The same uh, pseudomyxoma uh, case on, in the original organ may present a relatively benign, uh, mild, uh, banal-looking uh, histology. It may present only with, with an anonymous change on the, on the surface of a cystadenoma. However, by the same cells reaching the abdominal cavity, uh, this is still debated whether it is because of the tumor itself uh, growing through the abdominal wall or the appendiceal wall, rather, or, or uh, this is just a mechanical rupture of the organ and therefore the, these uh, cells get uh, uh, access to the peritoneal cavity. This is, this is still debated, but, but basically this, some of these tumors will, will present with relatively uh, 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 high-grade uh, morphology and uh, some of them will uh, present with a lower grade morphology. This is, the, uh, this is one of our, our specimens. Uh, this was a uh, uh, very uh, limited uh, cecectomy and, and appendectomy. 
uh, here you can see this is an inside view from the uh, uh, large bowel towards the uh, appendix. You can see this bulging, uh, mucinous uh, uh, bulging of the, of the uh, mucosa from the, from the uh, appendix. If this patient uh, uh, received uh, only a uh, appendectomy, probably we would have a positive margin. And this is the opening of the lumen, and you can see that the entire uh, appendix cavity is filled with uh, this mucinous uh, content. Uh, this is the one end of the spectrum, I would say. And the other end of the spectrum is this. It's not very uh, nicely projecting, and light is not perfect. But this, is, this entire abdominal cavity is filled with this uh, uh, fat infiltrated by, the, by this mucinous uh, content. And, and this is the pseudomic stomal peritoneal. So it's, it's a very wide range which uh, this uh, disease pre could present. And uh, these, these are the terms which we often uh, describe. So the mucinous adenoma, cyst adenoma, low uh, grade appendicial mucinous neoplasm is, uh, can be used in, in, in this uh, uh, setting. There's no extra appendicial mucin. If we carefully examine the entire uh, circumference of the appendix, we don't see any uh, extravasated mucin. Uh, the uh, epithelium is well defined within the uh, uh, mu uh, mucinous, uh, within the mucosa. Uh, the margin is clear, and no. Uh, this will present with, with a very good, good outcome, and this is this is basically a benign process. This is the lining. It, it can have uh, some uh, pseudostratification. It can have some villus uh, outpouching, as as you see here. It, it's relatively. Uh, elongated uh, villus structures uh, on the on the uh, surface. The it's important to see the surgical margin. We always ink the margin. Every uh, uh, appendectomy specimen is inked. Therefore, we can see whether the uh, process extends to the margin. If it is uh, present, we have to uh, communicate this to the surgeons and tell them that they have to do more. Probably they do usually do a uh, cecectomy or a right uh, colectomy. Then the, the next step is whether the appendicell wall is involved or not. Some involvement is something like this. This is a ruptured appendix, uh, and this mucin is uh, getting through the wall. We don't see any evidence that this, this epithelial uh, growth, we don't see any epithelial growth, actually. The epithelium is very thin and stretched, and there is nothing really uh, uh, tells us that this may uh, behave in an aggressive fashion. There is no... no uh, uh, cytologic or, or, or uh, histologic evidence that this, this uh, 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 can be anything but, but a cystadenoma. However, because this is present in the, in, uh, it is ruptured, it is present in the abdominal surface, this may uh, behave in a, uh, an aggressive uh, fashion, and therefore we have to uh, uh, raise the possibility that this, this, this patient has to be followed uh, closely. Some appendicell wall involvement is something like this, when, the, when these little, uh, relatively low-grade uh, uh, glandular structures are growing into the wall. And here, this is, this is a higher-grade uh, uh, tumor invasion into the wall with very small uh, pinpoint uh, glands with, with relatively uh, high uh, uh, cytologic atypia. So this, this, is, this is, again, a spectrum in the, in the appendicell wall involvement. Uh, and, and the extra appendicell mucin has to be uh, also very carefully examined. Uh, it is hard to find uh, epithelial cells sometimes in them. Sometimes it is completely acellular. Does it mean that this uh, patient is, is, should be uh, uh, considered completely uh, benign if this is completely filling the abdominal cavity? Probably not. And we have to take every step to find these uh, cells because most of these have some uh, uh, tumor cells. Uh, floating in the, in the uh, extracellular mucin. And, and, and this term, how to describe this uh, uh, mucin in the, appendix, uh, in the uh, uh, peritoneal cavity, that there, uh, there are many, many names uh, uh, circulating. One of them is the uh, diffuse appendicell, uh, the diffuse uh, peritoneal uh, uh, adenomucinosis. Some uh, other name is peritoneal mucinous carcinomatosis, uh, low grade. Uh, some other name, WHO, uh, the new WHO classification still uh, uh, recommends this pseudomic stomal peritoneal low-grade uh, 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 determination. These are all talking about the same uh, 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 disease process. Basically, the cells which we see are relatively low-grade. The uh, nuclei are relatively basally oriented. The, they have 
good new sync content. Uh, the, there is some pseudo stratification possible, and the, the, we don't see uh, infiltration of these uh, glandular uh, structures into the surrounding tissue. Uh, the, the epithelium itself is not, uh, 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 does not have uh, these, these in infiltrative, invasive uh, uh, features. And the, the, the other uh, possibility when, when these, these uh, uh, peritoneal mucinous carcinomatosis, PMT, high grade, with high-grade cytological TPA, when we, we see that the epithelium really actively infiltrating into the surrounding tissues, these, these have a much worse behavior. And uh, the, the low-grade uh, peritoneal uh, 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 no longer get uh, pseudomyxoma peritonei have a re very good response rate to uh, cytoreductive surgery, while the uh, high grade has somewhat, somewhat worse. And this is that, that convoluted table, which uh, is uh, partially uh, 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 reported in the Archive of Pathology and Lab Medicine last year by Dr. Yantis and group uh, from uh, uh, Cornell. And uh, this, uh, here, these are the important features which you have to look for. Is the tumor confined to the appendix or beyond the appendix, meaning this is already in the uh, peritoneal cavity? If it is, uh, uh, the tumor is confined to the appendix, most of these are, this green zone has an excellent uh, uh, response rate. They, they will uh, have a very, very minimal uh, uh, chance of recurrence or, or, or diffuse abdominal uh, disease. Uh, when the epithelium has uh, infiltration into the appendiceal wall, there is a, a few percent uh, uh, five-year uh, survival loss. But this is a, a really a big uh, uh, drop in the, in the survival rate when, when you consider the uh, uh, pseudomyxoma peritonei or the diffuse abdominal involvement. And th these are the names which are used. There are different uh, papers in the last uh, 10, 15 years and, uh, and s some of them use invasive mucinous adenocarcinoma, regardless of the low-grade or high-grade epithelial uh, 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 peritoneal uh, uh, epithelium. The, some of others are using the uh, low-grade appendicular mucinous neoplasm throughout in the spectrum, and they, they, they just uh, jump in the uh, high-grade epithelial uh, uh, epithelium in the peritoneal mucin uh, for the uh, adenocarcinoma. Some others are using the uh, DPAM, the uh, diffuse uh, peritoneal adenomucinosis. But basically, these are all uh, uh, talking about a relatively well-defined two-tier system. So based on the um, uh, cytologic atypia or the cytologic grade of these cells within the peritoneal mucin, we can uh, uh, relatively predict a uh, relative, relative good response to uh, a cytoreductive surgery and a group with a relatively uh, worse uh, response to the cytoreductive uh, surgery. And uh, so this may uh, explain why there are so many ways calling uh, the same uh, disease process. Uh, unfortunately, we, we probably should uh, come together and, and, uh, and, and uh, clean up our, our acts and, uh, and make, make a uh, uh, mutually or, or completely uh, uh, acceptable uh, uh, language which should be understood by everybody. But, but basically, all of these can be relatively well uh, 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 defined in, in this first portion of the table where we, we know that the tumor is beyond the appendix or within the appendix and whether the uh, epithelium is, is, is high grade or low grade. And therefore, the clinician, uh, when, if the clinician is aware of this kind of uh, 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 two-tier system which we are uh, considering, then they can, they can make the right uh, clinical de decision. So this was all.